Okay, this is how we start milking with the bucket system, uh, surge bucket system. Okay, you can turn on your air compressor or your vacuum pump. The needle here should be straight up and down, so you make sure you got the right vacuum. And you turn on your pet cock, your stall cock, I mean. Make sure you got vacuum. Then you see your pulsator is. Make sure that's going back and forth, click, 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 like it's supposed to, and you adjust it with a screw, which probably this one right here. Anyways, that's, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. You're supposed to brush the bag first with a brush, nice brush like this, to get her to know that you're going to start milking her, my fake cow here. And then you wash her off with a rag, wash off her teats, nice and wash them off. Squirt a little milk out of each one. Squirt a little milk out of each one so that you make sure it's, they're all squirting out nice like they're supposed to be. And then you, uh, then you put the strap over her back if it's a surge type bucket. So here we go. So let's strap over to that to my big cow. Fasten that down here. So hold your milker about right. I guess my fake cow is a little tall. Anyways, and you can hook it in here. Now while these tit cups are hanging straight down, there's no vacuum in them because of the way this milker is built. There's a slant cut in every one of these. So while it's pointing straight down, there is no vacuum. Okay. So, anyways, it's all running good like it's supposed to. And you got your cow, she's ready to milk. And you start out by grabbing the farthest back tit cup away from you. Put a kink in the hose so it isn't sucking vacuum. Grab it by the top so you can guide the teat in like this. So we'll slide this down so a little bit more. Oh, we'll take this strap down. It works better when it's sitting down flat. Anyways, you take the farthest back one, guide it with your fingers to slide it on because you won't be able to see. So use your uh, heart, the hand farthest away. Then you grab the next one in the front and you guide it with your fingers up into the, the teat up in there and you guide the, the other back one and you kink it, kink it down here so that it isn't sucking and then you guide that one, guide the teat up in there with your fingers and then you have the last one that's just closest to you which is this one and this again you'll guide with your fingers because if she's a, like a jersey or some short-legged cow you probably won't be able to see that. So I don't know if I got that right. But anyways, we can try it again. Take them all off. And when you're gonna take them off, some of them won't have busted the vacuum. So you put your finger in there, break the vacuum, bring it down, just let it fall straight. Break the vacuum, let it fall down straight. Break the vacuum, let it fall down straight. Let it down. Okay, now we'll go through it again where I hope you can see this time. You start with the furthest one away, the back one. Pick it up, have your fingers, index finger and thumb right on the top because you won't be able to see or you shouldn't, you might be able to, but not, maybe not. Then you can guide the teat in. Start with the next one. Put a kink in the hose so it ain't sucking so much. Lift it up so it, get the teat in there. Always guide the teat in with your fingers. And the thing is, you guide them in with your fingers. And then you check the milk flow with your fingers. You squeeze, you squeeze the milk line right here where the milk is coming in. So you know what it feels like when the milk is coming through the little hoses here. Because it's not clear, so you can't see it. So you got to go by feel. So you squeeze each, each one to see what it feels like where the milk is coming at, right away when you put it on. Okay, so that'll be your indicator 
when you see the quarter is starting to go dry, you can uh, check it again. And if, if, it, if it, there's nothing coming, you won't feel any lumps sliding through here. Then you can break the vacuum with your finger. If it hasn't already broken its own vacuum, let it fall down. Check this one, check them all. And if there's not, then, then you let them down. And you do this so the cow doesn't kick. And like I said, some of them would be sucking air right away, so you'll know it's, you know, take it off then. But the reason you, the reason that you have to kind of, you have to use a milking machine for a cow anymore is because they genetically altered them so all their teeth are very small and short. So they don't step on them and cut them off and ruin the cow. Um, and back in the 60s when I started milking cows, they all had pendulous udders hanging down and the teats were big hand-sized teats. And now you can't, most of the ones I've had, you can only wrap two fingers around for my, my hands. So I had one cow, BB, where she, um, the milk machine, my vacuum pump quit. So it was too late in the day to go to town and get one, so I started hand milking her. And after about a half hour, she was a good cow, after about a half hour with a two finger method of trying to milk her out, she kicked at me and she said, that's enough for that. So anyways, that's, the reason you do it is, A, if you surprise them and they kick, they kick away from you. B, is because you're gently putting them on so they get used to it. Now you've seen these people with their, uh, um, the people with the parlors where they're standing behind them and slapping them on there just as quick as they can. They're, they're doing it by fast, but the brushing started out, when you brush the bag, is it, that was a throwback to hand milking, because you wanted to brush all the stuff off, anything loose, so it didn't fall in the pail. And then you wash them, and get them prepped for that. And a couple of things about, I don't know about the, day, the cows of today, but my dad used to let the, the calves nurse on them as soon as they were born, and every day after, and he weaned the calves, then he'd veal them. Then he tried to milk them, and these were half dairy, half beef cows. And they would invariably dry themselves up because they had to have a calf, and if the calf was gone, they said, you're not getting the milk. So I am against, if you're gonna use her for a milk cow, I'm against letting a calf nurse because you're just gonna, you, you don't know, you got a 50-50 chance of her just drying up after the calf is on weaned. So I don't, I don't know what you're gonna do with the calf, but anyways. And we fed milk to the calves for resale, the little bull calves, and we castrated to horn them, and then we'd um, feed them up till like close to 400 pounds, and then we'd sell them. So anyways, this is the surge bucket method. So uh, next one I'll do will be the hanging bucket.